Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for the Facebook group called Fans of Serif Software. In this Affinity Photo tutorial, I want to look at making a pop art image. Now, this is going to be the end result, hopefully. Um, but a little sort of look at a pop art in general. Now, I'm no art expert, I don't know too much about pop art and um, what I do know about it is probably what everybody knows about it in the sense that there are probably two biggish um, makers of pop art which would be Andy Warhol and Roy Lichtenstein. Now Andy Warhol's pop art images like the most famous one is like, it's Marilyn Monroe and the soup cans where there's you know, sort of like bold colours almost just smeared on to a certain extent, especially with the Marilyn Monroe pictures. But it's all just like basic colours and outlines. And the Roy Lichtenstein type of pop art is more like a comic book. Um, you know, like heavy outlines and dots to do the shading and colouring and invariably with speech bubbles and what have you. Um, now if you want to go for the Andy Warhol type pop art there is already an Affinity photo tutorial done by Affinity Jack. The commentary is in German but as you can see here it has English subtitles so it is fairly easy to follow and it is well worth uh, sort of looking at. So seeing as there's already an Andy Warhol type tutorial, I thought I'd go for the Roy Lichtenstein type sort of comic art tutorial. So I needed an image and the image I got was from pixabay.com which is a free, royalty free image website. Now I will include the links to Affinity Jack's Andy Warhol tutorial and this image if you want to use this image. Um, I will add them to the description in the YouTube page for this video. So you can then check them both out. So going back to this start image which I've downloaded from pixabay.com um, it's probably best with these like pop art images if you don't go for a very cluttered especially background but a very cluttered image um, because you know, if it's like a comic book effect you don't want messes of background and things to distract the eye so you know as clear a background as possible is probably the best way to go so once you have your image oh and also sort of not too many colors as well because you know most comic books are only a few colors so you don't want masses of color but I mean you can do but it's just got to be a sort of a bit of extra work for you you know in this tutorial so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer so I'll just right click over here and you can either do Control and J or just click duplicate. Right once you have your new background layer and that is highlighted at the top we want to add the adjustment of brightness and contrast and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of help boost and lighten the colors um, so I'm going to move the brightness up to around 40 41 that's close enough and contrast up to about 60 61 uh, again that's close enough and I'm going to merge now those adjustments and any future adjustments really a lot of it depends on your image and your personal taste 
Um, so how far you push things or you don't push things, I will leave up to you. Um, but this is these are the settings that I used for this image. Right. So now that we've done that to the this top layer here, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come up to filters, detect, detect edges, and I need this inverted so I'll just press Control and I to invert this because this is a layer that is going to give us like the outlines that we need for the sort of comic book effect but I, I want to get rid of this color here so I'm going to come to the adjustment the hue saturation adjustment and I'm just going to drop the saturation down to zero or actually minus 100% but in my eyes zero again I'm going to merge that and then I'm going to add a levels adjustment and this is where hopefully we can get rid of a lot of this um, background texture and just try and leave us with a more outlined darker image um, so I'm going to move the black up to about 50 percent and the white levels I'm going to come up to around 80 percent and the gamma levels I'm going to go to the left and I'm going to come down to around the 620 or 0 0.620 I should say roughly uh, 615 oh that would do so again I'm going to merge that in come back to the layers panel so there we have the black and white outline for this image and then all I need to do now is to blend this layer into the layer below now there are various ones I found that worked for, for me personally I found that overlay probably work the best but soft light does it sort of loses especially that vibrant green color at the background um, color burn which is that one there again that's a much I suppose it's a much darker black outlines and another one that works quite well is multiply in fact there's not a vast difference between multiply and color burn so which blending mode you use I will leave up to you but I'm going to go with overlay and then we come on to now that we have these basically the image finished almost a bit like a an Andy Warhol type image um, I'm going to merge these layers together so I'm going to right click and come to merge visible and it will make a new layer at the top which is a merged version of these two images uh, these two layers so I can now work on this almost as if it was a brand new individual image so what I now need is a selection tool um, especially the probably the best one to start off with maybe is the flood selection tool and I've got it set on new at the moment but I've got a tolerance of 20 and contiguous I've got a tick in it and then I'm just going to click somewhere in the green background area and then I'm going to click on add so I can now add to that selection and I'm just going to click around now I've pretty much got most of the green selected there but I'm just going to come to the selection brush tool and I'll have that on subtract I need to have that on add and I'm just going to increase the size and I'm just going to 
mop up any of these small dots that I may have missed in the, or the program missed when it was selecting the background and when I come nearer to the, the this man here I'm just going to lower the brush size until you pretty much got everything selected you don't necessarily have to go too mad because this is like a you know a pop-up image and they don't necessarily stick close to the lines and edges as far as I can see anyway um, so once you've pretty much got this selected you can then press Control and J and it will make a new layer but it will just be the green background that is on this layer so I can now press Control and D to get rid of the selection area and make sure that the new layer that has just the background on it is selected and then come up to filters colors and then the very last one is half tone now this will add the dot effect now you have you can just stick with the effect that you get I mean it does look quite good actually you got the dots here but you can also have lines or you can have a circular effect both of which work quite well well the one I'm going to go with is color which gives us the color dot effect and then you can alter the cell size so it gets bigger or smaller depending on what you want um, but I'm going to go for um, 50 and the contrast is just it's, as you can see you can either lose some of the colors or some of the dots or just have them very faint in the background or the higher you come the, the sharper those dots will become um, so I'm going to go for around the 40 I'll leave it on 41 it's near enough now I, I can't see any difference that the bottom two sliders make to this these may work better with maybe dot line or circular options mainly because they are just basically black and white so those two sliders may work better with that option I've not really looked into that but once you're happy with which, whichever dot effect that you have you can just click apply so what I, I have lost his bit of his finger here I must have missed something when I was doing the selection but I'm not going to go back and um, rectify that um, you just have to be careful a little bit careful just make sure that when you make a selection that it is only the area that you want selected very sorry about that but I will carry on so now I want to select the shirt so what I would do is I will hide this dot green back, dotted background and I will come back to and highlight the image below and I will stick with the selection brush tool for doing the shirt and again making sure that add is selected I'm just going to select this shirt and a quick check here I've got pretty much everything oh, I've just selected a bit of his skin here so I'll come to subtract and then come back to add lower the size of the brush right I think that's everything that I want selected yeah 
that looks okay to me like that so I will now just press Control and J again and this time it will just be the shirt that is selected I can press Control and D to get rid of the selection area and it's just a case of repeating what we did before filters colors half tone see again you could stick with dots black and white dots or you could go with lines circular but I will stick with the color options and I'm going to make the cell size 29 and the contrast 58 and then click apply so if I then bring back that green background we're now getting pretty much near to the end of this so the last thing I want to do is to do the skin areas now again looking at the previous um, like Roy Litchfield Lichtenstein's images you didn't necessarily put dots everywhere I mean you could stop at either just the background or just the shirt or whatever you want um, again it's all down to your own personal taste um, so I'm gonna leave I'm not gonna put dots on these the, the hair but I am gonna put a, some mild dot effects onto his skin area so again I will just hide those two just so it makes it easier for me to see what, what, what I'm highlighting and again I will click and highlight to make sure this is the layer that I'm working on and again I'm on the selection brush tool and that's that arm done and that's that arm done I think I've got everything there and then it's just a facial area doesn't have to be 100% perfect here um, I do have a little bit of that shirt there so I'll come to subtract lower the brush size a bit and subtract that shirt so there we have the face and the arms done so much like before I'll press Control and J to put that onto its own layer so press Control and D to get rid of the selection area and then filters, colors, half tones and this is an area where these other options probably won't work as well but if you come to color and we're going to sort of lower the color size quite dramatically I'm going to come to 15.5 for cell size and 15.5 for contrast just so there's a slight hint of the dots in certain areas especially the darker areas and then just click apply and then I can bring back all these other levels so that that would pretty much be the finish of the sort of adding the dots that I'm going to do but if I come to the top layer and highlight it I'm going to just add a speech bubble which you can do from these various ones here you have a call out round or rectangle or the call out ellipse tool and once you've got that just draw your speech bubble if you're going to do this part of the uh, tutorial and if you right click on that you can come to transform and flip horizontal 
if like me you've put the speech bubble on the left and you want this little arrow to come down towards where his mouth would be or if you put it on the right you wouldn't have to flip it so I'm going to then use the move tool and I'm just going to rotate it a bit just move it slightly you can resize it to suit whatever it is you want and then once you're happy with that I'll come off that tool um, in fact no, I'll come back to this tool because I want to make sure that this is a quite a strong outline because at the moment the stroke is set on none so if I click on this where it says none and then I can alter the width and then it should if you've got the stroke set to black and the fill set to white you should then get this nice thick black line round here so I'm going to leave this on um, I'll leave it on 9.8 but you can set it to wherever you want so just click somewhere up here somewhere just to get rid of that dialogue so there you have your speech bubble then it's just a case of adding some text um, I'm going to come for the artistic text tool and just click and drag out a rough size that I want type what it is of what I want I misspelled that F-I-M-I-E there's another I in there affinity that's it okay so I'll just click and highlight click drag and highlight all of that text and then I'm going to align center and then I'm going to select a font or no in fact what I'll do is I'll resize this first before I do that let me resize this so it fits on a bit better and use the move tool just to get it where I want right come back to the text tool make sure it's highlighted now I need a font now again this is down to your own personal choice but I thought that since this was like a pop art and sort of funky type um, image you want to find a text that sort of suits that so the one I went with was a text called Chewy so now I've got my text and the size I want it and where I want it I just want to pick a colour and I'm going to go for I'll go for red this time because I think they'll go well with the green let's go with that and then just come off of that tool and that is the end of the tutorial really so this is sort of making a Roy Lichtenstein esque type image with the dots and like I said before whether you go like I have and put dots on all the three main areas or whether you just do the shirt or if you just do the background um, I will leave that up to you thank you for watching and goodbye